I have the pleasure to personally recognize and present uh, awards to those who have gone above and beyond um, expectations during their tour of duty. Um, these officers um, have all been recognized by their peers or supervisors for going the extra mile. And you know, I'll tell you, most of the you know most of these folks, they don't do it for the recognition. Um, most of the time, they don't even want the recognition. But um, thankfully, either their peer or a supervisor will write it up um, and forward it to the awards committee, who then votes on these. <clears throat> These awards are not taken lightly, um, and many of the people involved in this, uh, the process, ultimately cu culminates in um, the awards that are going to be presented today, um, all the work that goes into it. So without that, uh, with all that aside, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, the first award, or the awards we're going to present today are the Outstanding Performance Award, the Distinguished Ribbon Award, and the Valorous Service Award. Um, the first award is going to be the Outstanding Performance Award, and I'll just tell you what this award is presented for, and then um, I'll call the officers up here. The Outstanding Performance Award may pre be presented to employees who display a high degree of initiative and professionalism in the performance of their duties. And the officers receiving the Outstanding uh, Performance Award today are Officers Jesse Baum, Stephen Espinoza, Robert Flores, Hank Gross, um, and Sergeant Kenny Urban. And uh, Officer Jesse Baum is also going to be a uh, presented award, but it'll be a little bit later um, with a couple other awards. So at this time, I'd like to invite uh, Stephen, Robert, Hank, and Kenny. Come on up for me, please. If y'all just stand right here. Tell you a little, about, a little bit about each one of them and then tell you what they did to be recognized. Um, Officer Espinosa has been with the department since 2012. He served as a PSO prior, prior to entering the academy. He has 14 years total with the city of Pasadena. He previously served as a member of the Honor Guard and as a field training officer. Um, Officer Flores has been with the police department since 2001. During that time, he served on Honor Guard for 16 years, bike patrol for 16 years, and a tr uh, field training officer for 10. And he was assigned to the DART division for three years. Officer Gross has been with the Pasadena Police Department since 1988. Good grief, Hank. It's <laughs> a long time. He spent 10 years on patrol where he was a DRE certified and served as a field training officer. He's worked various assignments within the criminal investigation division throughout his career, and all three of them are currently assigned to the juvenile division. Um, sergeant Urban has been with the department since 1992, and prior to promoting to sergeant in 2008, he served as a field training officer, worked part-time in uh, commercial vehicle enforcement, and spent six years in various detective positions with the Criminal Investigations Division. He's a former member and supervisor of the Crisis Negoci Negotiations Team. He also supervised at the Police Academy, the Juvenile Division, including the Children's Assessment Center, and he currently is a super supervisor of the Juvenile Division. I'm going to tell you about the incident uh, for which they are being recognized. On October 26 um, of this year, a phone call was received from a detective with the Human Traffic, Trafficking Division of the St. Paul, Minnesota Police Department. The sergeant advised that there was a 12-year-old female that was reporting missing from the St. Paul area, was believed to be endangered and in the company of an adult male here in Pasadena. The sergeant provided a picture of the juvenile and only a vague description of the suspect. She stated they were able to ping the juvenile's phone and could provide periodic updates on a general area of the phone. She provided past phone data, which only showed locations of large apartment complexes but not any specific apartment. The phone was then showed to move away from the apartment complex to an area of an intersection in Pasadena. These officers responded to the area and began canvassing local businesses in an attempt to locate the juvenile. The juvenile's picture was shown to numerous business employees and citizens to no avail. Detectives started to canvass the nearby apartment complex. It's believed the suspect became aware of the officer's presence in the hunt for the victim and he dropped her off at an apartment complex office. The juvenile was then able to text her mother in Minnesota, give her the name of the apartment complex, and the detectives were able to respond and recover the juvenile unharmed. The incident could have had devastating and clearly a different ending than it did had these officers not been quick to respond to the request uh, for help from an out-of-state police agency. Sergeant Finnegan with the St. Paul Police Department expressed her gratitude in an email stating, I cannot express how grateful I am for the officers' help. They def definitely went above and beyond to assist me. You should be proud of their efforts. Um, I'll tell you, I'm very proud of them and their commitment to all victims, not just those who live in our city. And, as you see, this could have had a different ending, and I'm sure the, you know, the, the juvenile's mother was very grateful um, you know, with her 12-year-old daughter halfway across the country that they you know, stepped up to, to find her and, and get her reunited with her mother. So congratulations to all four of you um, for your outstanding performance.
a slot in the middle. Knock it over. Perfect. Thank you. You want to say anything? <coughs> or anybody else? <laughs> thank you, Chief. Um, on behalf of the detective standing here and myself, we'd like to thank the awards committee. And also, we would like to take time to acknowledge publicly uh, Lieutenant McGill. Um, he was instrumental in helping us uh, during this investigation, uh, spending numerous hours uh, both out there on surveillance and uh, following up on some leads. So, Lieutenant McGill, thank you for your help. Thank you, Chief. I'd like to invite Officer Garza and Robertson up. <clears throat> They're going to be receiving the Distinguished Service Ribbon. And this ribbon may be issued to any officer who saves a human life or prevents the consequences of a major crime in the performance of their duty while either on or off duty. <clears throat> I'll tell you a little bit about David and Officer Robertson and then what they did to uh, receive the award. Officer Garza has been with the department since 1995. He's had a 34 year career in law enforcement. So far, 26 of those with the Pasadena Police Department. He served on all three patrol shifts, the gang task force, the street crimes unit, and the felony warrant squad during his tenure. He's currently assigned as a community liaison officer. Officer Robertson's been with the department since 2003. Prior to joining the department, he served with the South Houston Police Department for two years. He held collateral duties of the SRT team leader in, uh, in 12 years as an FTO while serving in the patrol division. His current assignment is a community liaison officer. Um, I'll just tell you really about their roles. Um, you, there is nothing that any supervisor can't give these two guys that they don't go take care of. And they're kind of the catch-all um, when there's a problem that needs to be solved and you don't know who else to call. Um, if you call these two guys, they go out there and they get it pr fixed pretty quick and they hardly ever get complained on when they fix it. So <laughs> that's important. <coughs> on September 27, 2021, officers Garza and Robertson were installing a uh, doorbell camera a ring doorbell camera for the bridge over troubled waters which is a uh, domestic violence shelter here in Pasadena. The officers were requested to help with the project since they already had established partnership with the shelter staff and like I said who uh, yeah, we don't know who to give it to hey can you all go install a camera and they go do it. <coughs> While they were at the residence and saw on the camera uh, the officers heard a family across the street screaming in distress. Both officers ran to the location of the screams I wouldn't have believed y'all had run had I not seen it on video <laughs> but <laughs> fast walk <Yeah. laughs> is that more accurate <laughs> but no they really did run <laughs> to the locations of the screams and they found a panicked family and an infant not breathing officer Garza promptly took hold of the infant performed the proper necessary technique clear the infant's airway and resume breathing while this was occurring officer Robertson provided necessary backup by calming the family and ensuring an ambulance was, uh, an ambulance was en route Incidents like this clearly are stressful and have the potential to have a negative outcome. However, due to their quick and decisive actions, the infant's breathing was restored qu quickly and she was returned to the family without any serious health concerns. Um, on behalf of the family and the entire department, I'm happy to present you both with the Distinguished Service Ribbon. And actually, the story was... Uh, Channel 13, I think, actually featured it and ran it because um, it's such a good story. So, oh, thank you. slide up a little bit. <coughs> Suck it in. <laughs> 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 you want to say something? Officer Turner, come on up. Officer Turner began his career with the Pasadena Police Department in 2016. Prior to joining the department, he served as a paramedic with the LaPorte EMS for five years, and he still works with them on a part-time basis. He's currently assigned to the patrol division where he holds collateral duties of a field training officer and a member of bike patrol. He's also a member of the SWAT team and serves um, in the tactical medical division. <clears throat> on September 19, 2021, officers responded to a call for service involving a nine-month-old infant not breathing. Officers Lozano um, and Perez were first on scene. Officer Lozano immediately began chest compressions while Officer Perez calmed the infant's mother and gathered pertinent medical information. It was learned that the infant suffered from a medical condition made, which made it difficult for the child to breathe and required the insertion of a tracheotomy tube. Officer Turner arrived on scene, took over performing CPR on the infant. 
Officer Turner noticed that the infant's tracheotomy tube had become dislodged and the infant would not be able to be oxygenated without it properly in place. Officer Turner told the ambulance crew who then reinserted the tube without incident. Officers Lozano and per, uh, Perez provided a police escort to the uh, ambulance, making the transport to the hospital as quickly and safely as possible. Once at the hospital, Officer Turner continued chest compressions while relaying the details of the situation to the medical staff. At this point, the child did not have a pulse and CPR had been performed by officers for, for approximately 10 minutes. Officer Turner checked the infant for a pulse one more time and located one. He advised the medical staff who then took, o took over. The child eventually began to breathe on her own. Without the quick and calm actions of the officers, there's no doubt that this nine month little old girl would not have survived. Um, we recently reached out to the mother of the little girl and happy to report that she, uh, she's doing well. And she actually invited the officers to come by and, and see her when she's not in a, in a crisis state. <clears throat> the officers perform well as a team under extremely stressful conditions and are more than worthy of this award. So, Michael, congratulations. Where's your dance? Did you want to say anything? No, sir. I knew the answer. <laughs> this next award is going to be uh, twofold. There's two different awards I'm going to be presenting. Uh, two officers will be presented with the um, Valor Service Ribbon and one officer with the Outstanding Performance uh, Award related to the same incident. The Valor Service Ribbon may be issued to any officer who saves a human life or prevents the consequences of a major crime. The service rendered may be on or off duty, must be in the performance of duty, and undertaken while the officer is fully aware of imminent danger and a known fear or risk to his or her own life. <clears throat> Many times on calls for service, numerous officers are involved in the incident from different aspects. Sometimes on the original call, officers are immediately involved, some are involved afterwards, and yet others are involved in the follow-up investigation. I say all that to explain that this one incident had many different layers, um, and officers can be recognized um, for the role that they took um, in the incident. And the recipients of the Valorous Service Ribbon today are Officers Nicholas Kalunga and Elias Vega, and Officer Jesse Baum's going to be receiving the Outstanding Performance Award for the same incident. The three of y'all will come up here for me, please. <coughs> Officer Baum, my far left, your right, has been with the department since 2013. He's currently assigned a night shift where he serves as a field training officer and a member of the SRT team. Officer Kalunga has been with the Pasadena Police Department since 2015. He's currently assigned a night shift patrol where he performs collateral duties of being a field training officer and a member of the SWAT team. And officer Vega has been with the department since 2019 and he's currently assigned a night shift patrol. On August 31st, 2021, officers were dispatched to an apartment to check on the welfare of a known citizen with psychological issues. Officers Kalunga and Vega were the first to arrive on scene. Officer Kalunga noticed smoke coming from the side of the apartment building and quickly requested the fire department respond. As Officer, officer Kalunga approached the actual apartment for the call for service, he heard screaming inside the apartment and observed smoke seeping through the sides of the door. Officer Kalunga instructed the occupants to open the door, but they were unable to do so. Officer Kalunga made the decision to kick the door open. A male exited the apartment. The apartment was filled with smoke and the male had obvious burn injuries to his body. The male told officers that his wife was still inside the apartment. Officers Kalunga and Vega looked in the apartment and observed the thick smoke and flames. Officer Kalunga requested additional police officers to help evacuate the other apartments as it was approximately 4.30 in the morning with most of the residents still asleep. Officer Vega continued to look through the apartment from the outside trying to locate the female while Officer Kalunga started evacuating nearby apartments. Officer Vega was able to locate the female lying on the floor inside the apartment. He called to Officer Kalunga and both officers entered the smoke and flame filled apartment and pulled the female out. Their quick and heroic actions allowed them to extract the victim from the apartment approximately 10 minutes to, prior to the fire department arriving. Once the female was removed from the apartment, officers Kalunga and Vega continued to evacuate several additional families from the complex while inhaling heavy smoke themselves. Officer Kalunga and Vega clearly went beyond the call of duty by risking their own lives to save another. And it's with a lot of pride and admiration that I present them with this valorous service ribbon for their heroism on that day. Congratulations. Hold on to those and we'll get a picture after we get Jesse done. <coughs> Officer Baum also responded to the apartment fire that morning. When he arrived on scene, he quickly took over 
a leadership role. He directed responding officers to move their vehicles away from the buildings to make room for the fire trucks. He located the nearest fire hydrants for the responding firefighters, and he directed officers to secure the landing zone for life flight. As the fire grew from one apartment to multiple ones within the building, Officer Baum directed officers to clear the surrounding buildings once the one actually involved in the fire was fully evacuated. Due to the heavy smoke, low visibility, and the size of the apartment complex, Officer Baum directed dispatch to take a roll call for the officers on scene to ensure that everyone was safe and accounted for. He also instructed officers to report over the radio the apartment numbers they evacuated to make sure that no residences were missed. Officer Baum showed a high degree of leadership, initiative, and professionalism by taking command of an extremely stressful and evolving situation, and his actions are being recognized today with the Outstanding Performance Award. <laughs> Somebody want to say something? No. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Again, this is just a, a snapshot of the good work that goes on here every day. Um, and like I said, this work goes on all the time. People just don't always capture it, take the time to write it down. But um, it, it makes me proud. Um, to be the chief here when you know you have men and women that do work like this every day and they don't do it for the recognition they do it because it's the right thing to do um, and because they're compassionate and again I want to thank you all for coming out um, invite you to stick around um, visit with the award recipients uh, for a few minutes again thank you all for coming out